remembrance of Allah is the greatest deed ever performed by a human being. It elevates his life, brings him peace, tranquility, and happiness, and enables him to fulfill the real mission of his life in this world. When Allah the Almighty describes believers in the Holy Quran, He says, those who believe and whose hearts are set at rest by the remembrance of Allah. Tonight's episode is an attempt to examine the Quranic verses and traditions which talk about and discuss uh, the merits of Salat al-Layl. Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the 13th episode of Life from Karbala, Ramadan series with me, your host Ahmed Ali. For the dear viewers who are just tuning in for the first time, um, before prior to this episode, uh, we discussed the most controversial topics uh, which are mentioned in the Holy Quran. This was all discussed with my dear and esteemed guest, Sayyid Hussain Al Qazwini, who has joined me once again in tonight's episode. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidna. Alaykum How are you? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. As we get further into Ramadan, uh, we kind of feel that we don't want aid to be so close because we do feel uh, the blessings which are you know bestowed in this holy month. Uh, but uh, Sayyidina Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam states there is no action more beloved to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and nothing more that saves man from the evil of this world and the hereafter than the remembrance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. If we want to apply this narration to Salat al-Layl because uh, as tradition says Salat al-Layl uh, is very highly considered to Ahl Bayt and to our pious maraja and scholars. However, sir, first I would like to uh, talk about what Salat al-Layl is. Is it just an ordinary prayer that anyone can perform? Is it a specific prayer at a specific time? Um, and what's its significance? And why wh Why do we see the emphasis on Salat al-Layl? A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajeem Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين. اللهم صل على محمد. صلاة الليل is one of those special acts, mm -hmm. uh, special acts of worship mm -hmm. that only a select few, a selected elite, have the opportunity to pray. Mm -hmm. It's not something very common. It's not something that everyone has the opportunity to perform. Mm -hmm. I could I could say it's a it's a selected elite. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't mean by selected elite as in you know Allah purposely allows some people to pray, but He doesn't allow others to pray. No, mm -hmm. but some people Allah gives them a boost. He gives them a bigger chance mm -hmm. because they chose to pray Salat al They chose to dedicate. Uh, some minutes of their nights mm -hmm. to pray this special salah. I think Salat al layl is one of those acts that distinguishes the righteous from from the unrighteous, uh, or 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 to say it distinguishes the ones that are really righteous from the ones that only do what's mandatory. Mm -hmm. There's two types of Muslims. Those that only do what is mandatory. Of course, there's many types of Muslims, yes. but I'm talking about religious Muslims. Yes. There's those that only do the mandatory things. Pray five times a day, fast during the month of Ramadan, only fast 30 days out of the month, no more. For the prayers, they only do what is necessary. Salat al-Subah has two units, they do two units and then they go to bed. Salat al-Dhuhr is four, Salat al-Asr is four. They do exactly what's necessary and that's it. And then you have another kind of Muslims that, you know, the, the wajibat, the, obligation, the obligatory worship is not enough. Mm -hmm. They still feel a need. You know, it's just like food. There are some people, for them, two meals a day is enough. Three meals a day is enough. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. For others, it's not enough. They still get hungry. Mm -hmm. Their body nu needs nutrition. Children. Children, yes. they don't have three meals a day. They have mm -hmm. 30 meals a day. Mm -hmm. Why? Because, of course, they're very small meals, but they're various meals at various times. 
because their body needs it. Mm -hmm. Some people praying five times a day is not enough. Fasting 30 days out of the year is not enough. Let's put fasting aside. Prayers. Prayers. Prayer five times a day is not enough. It's not enough. They want, they want to do, they feel the need. There's a need inside them to speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mm -hmm. to communicate. Praying puts them at ease, at comfort. We live in, in, in troublesome times. Life is full of difficulties. And we, we, we're always hearing about tragedies. Yes. Accidents, bombings, terrorism. You know, we live at a time, unfortunately, if you don't die in a, in a bombing, you die in a car accident. If you don't die in a car accident, you die in cancer. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, remove all Remove these. all of these tragedies away from us. Yes. You rarely find someone that dies a regular death. You know, these things, they really um, put pressure and stress on a person. When you start thinking about it, that I could die at any moment. Mm -hmm. We live in, you know, the age of terrorism and the age of cancer. Yes. And the age of car accidents. And, uh, you know, a human being, when he starts to think about this, this could put a lot of pressure and stress yes. on us. For some, the only way to remove the stress is through prayer. Is through prayer. It's through communicating with the Almighty, mm -hmm. the All Powerful, the one who created us and created everything else on this planet and ev and everyone else on this planet, the one who's who everything is in His hands. Tayyib, this is one. Two. It's about love as well. Mm -hmm. Salat al-Layl is really about love. You know, when you love someone, you speak to him or her a couple of times a day. But the most important phone call or the most important message is the or text night. is the one right before going to sleep. Right? For... It's the good night message. It's the, it's the have a good night yeah. message. You know, when you're speaking to someone, the one that you love, not a friend, not your neighbor, someone you love, mm -hmm. but at night you go to sleep without saying good night, you know, you're calling it a night, that's an insult. That's an insult, right? Mm -hmm. This is not in one culture, this is in a lot of cultures. Mm -hmm. We also have a romantic relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal. There are some that love Allah. It's not that they just Obey. Do this, do that. Do as Allah says. Yes. No, they have a relationship with Allah. Yes. Of course, when I say romantic, not to be misunderstood. Not, yeah. But Allah. It's different. For some, Allah is love. Yes. And Allah loves us. Allah gave us all these things. Doesn't this mean that He loves us? Mm -hmm. Allah brought us into this life. He gave us wonderful parents. He gave us an education. He gives us whatever, our, whatever we want. Isn't that sign of his love? Mm -hmm. Shouldn't we love him back? Yes. Shouldn't love be mutual? Salat al-Layl is a manifestation of love. Before you go to bed, or you, before you call it a day, before you call it a night, when everyone else is tired and everyone wants to go to sleep, you stand up in the middle of the night for a couple of minutes. It's not, it's not a, a two-hour mm -hmm. uh, you know, ritual. It takes 20 minutes, maybe less, less than 20 minutes. maybe more, maybe 15 minutes. It depends on what you recite. In it depends on what you, re what you recite and how long you like to speak yes. to Allah Azza wa You pray, you say your thanks, you, give your, you offer your thanks to Allah, you say what you'd like to say. You know, it's, a, it's, a open, it's an open dialogue. You can tell Allah whatever you'd like, whatever is in your heart. You want to complain, you want to thank Him. You want to ask him for certain things. Uh, you want to tell him how your day went, mm -hmm. how good your day was, how bad your day was. Mm -hmm. Say whatever you like to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then go to sleep. This is, this is a manifestation of love. And I think those that genuinely love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they pray Salat al-Layl and they're addicted to Salat al-Layl. They cannot stop. Ask those that pray Salat al-Layl all year long. Ask them not to pray for one night. Impossible. They won't do it. 
because Salat al-Layl means so much to them. It's so beautiful. They're so connected to it. And it's their way of connecting to Allah. See, what's beautiful about Salat al-Layl is that we don't have to do it. That's the beauty about it. Mm -hmm. Who's your favorite employee? If you were the owner of a company, who would be your best employee? The one that comes that on the hours that he has to or the one that stays over even when he doesn't need to? The one who might show up on a Sunday when he could be spending that Sunday with his family, but he'll, he'll show up even if he's not being uh, paid, for it. paid for it. Those are your... Those are your... Favorite employees. Favorite employees. Salat al-Layl is a salat that we don't have to pray, yet some still choose to. That's yes. the beauty about it. Mm -hmm. And we have narrations that Allah tells His angels that, look, this is my servant. Instead of going to sleep. And the hour of Salat al-Layl is after midnight. It's, a, it's, a, it's an hour where most people are asleep. I've heard otherwise. I've heard that it's after uh, sunset, prayer, after Maghrib and Isha. No, no. Salat al-Layl, we'll talk about the laws of Salat al-Layl later. Mm -hmm. Salat al-Layl begins from midnight. Muntasaf al-Layl, which is right in the middle of where sunset and fajr is. It starts from there. Yes, uh, if someone could not stay up till that time and wants to go to sleep, they could pray it before that. Mm -hmm. But not from sunset. So it's Salat al-Layl is meant to be slept. To pray it. Yeah, Salat al-Layl is meant to meant to be prayed in the middle of the night mm -hmm. when, when everyone's, everyone's asleep, asleep yes. when everyone's tired that's the beauty about it also mm -hmm. you know one of the one of the beautiful things about Salat al-Layl is that why is it so significant is that you can't show off with it you can show off with everything mm -hmm. with Salat al-Subh Salat al-Dhuhr Salat al-Asr you come to the mosque you pray in front of people you could show off you could show off with your money, with your khums, with your zakat, the way you spend. You built a mosque. You can show off. You can show people. Mm -hmm. But not Salat al-Layl. Salat al-Layl, everyone's asleep. Who are you going to show off to? Who are you going to show off to? Other everyone's asleep. Everyone's at home. People are asleep. That's why it's so special. Salat al-Layl is only for Allah. It's for no one else. Mm -hmm. you, you can show off with every other act of worship, with hajj, with umrah, with ziyara. You say, I... I did this, I did that. But you can't show off with Salat al-Layl. It's only for Allah. It's a genuine act. It's a sincere act for Allah. Also, it, uh, it shows determination. Mm -hmm. A person who's tired. Who's not tired at 12 midnight? You're tired. You've come back from a hard day at work. You're studying. You have to get up at 5 in the morning or 6 in the morning to go to school or to go to work or you have an exam. Or you have children that you just put to sleep and, and they get up in the middle of the night and they mm -hmm. cry if you have toddlers. You know, everyone wants, it's, it's a resting time. Yes. Midnight is a time to rest. Someone to get up and perform wudu. You know, when you perform wudu, what happens? Sleep goes away. Yes. No one wants to wash their face at 12 minute. That makes sleep go away. Mm -hmm. And you get up and pray, especially during winter. It's cold. You want to get under the sheets and cover you get up and you pray for a couple of minutes. That shows determination. Yes. That shows love. That shows your loyalty to Allah Azza wa Jal. There's a hadith, hadith al-Qudsi. Mm -hmm. I believe um, Allah told Musa, Ya Musa, كَذَبَ مَنْ زَعَمَ أَنَّهُ يُحِبُّنِي وَإِذَا جَنَّ عَلَيْهِ اللَّيْلِ نَامَ عَنِّي Ya Musa, a person who, said, who claims to love me, Yet at night, he goes and he sleeps without praying a couple of raka'at. This person is a liar. This person is a liar. Isn't that too somewhat extreme? Because people do claim to love Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they do perform various worships in the day. Yes. But yet at night, maybe they're tired. But love has various levels. Degrees, yes. It has various degrees. You know, you might love Mr. X. But if he's in the hospital, will you go spend the whole night with him in the hospital? No. Not necessarily. But his son will. But his son might not spend the night, the whole night. His father will probably spend the entire night. So there's love. A friend will love him to some degree. 
His son will love him to another degree, but his father will love him unconditionally. So we can say absolute love. Absolute love. Mm -hmm. Absolute love. This is a manifestation of absolute love. Allah is trying to say that, you know, I've done so much for you. It won't kill you to stand up in the middle of the night before you sleep and, and thank me and pray to me. You know, and I, uh, Christians have this. They have Salat al mm -hmm. But it's not necessarily performing wudu and standing and praying. Right before sleep, they say a prayer. Yes. They thank Allah for what they're doing. That's Salat al -Layl. For them, that's, that's like Salat al -Layl. Can we do that too? Yes. With recommended prayers, Allah is easy going. Yeah, well, yeah. If you don't want to stand, you could sit. Mm -hmm. If you don't, you don't want to sit, sit, lie down. Do whatever you'd like. You can't face the qabla, don't face the qabla. With recommended prayers, it's easy going. Allah has made it easy. Mm -hmm. Why? To say, you know, I'm not forcing you to do it the hard way. You can do it the easy way. Any way you like. Even any way you like. And still, people don't take advantage of that. Wow. Still, people, people don't take advantage of that. Wow. You could be sitting in your car, going to work, and praying. Some praying salah. I'm not saying reciting shifts. Quran. So, yeah. Night shift. Pray while you're driving. For rukur, put your head down a little bit. For sujood, a little bit more. That's salah, and you'll be rewarded. Wow. Islam has made it so easy to pray nawafil, recommended prayers. Yes, when it comes to wajibat, they have to, you know, they have to be done properly. Stand in front of the qibla, stand, not sit, and so on and so forth. But with nawafil, Allah has made it so easy. Yes. But still, we don't take an opportunity. Mm -hmm. We don't take advantage mm -hmm. of this opportunity, unfortunately. So, just like we, you know, if we're traveling, we call our kids our kids, our spouse, you call your wife, your husband, your fiance, right before going to sleep. Consider it like that. Salatul Layl is a couple of minutes right before going to sleep. You offer some prayers to Allah Azza wa Jal. And I could say that those who start praying Salatul Layl once, twice, three times, they will not stop. If they pay attention, if they concentrate, yes. they will love it so much that they can't stop. Mm -hmm. It's like the ziyar of Imam Hussein. Those that come for Arba'een once, they come every year. They fall in love. Yes. It's like Hajj. You go to Hajj once, you fall in love. You'd like to go every year. Salat al is like that. It is so spiritually beautiful yes. that you don't want to stop. Mm -hmm. well, that's actually very beautiful because we do see the emphasis uh, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places on this uh, prayer because as you mentioned, it has various, various blessings Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed in the middle of the night where everyone's asleep yet you're up worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but uh, if we can continue the discussion after a short break if you want inshallah sure. uh, respect the viewers uh, do stay tuned after the break for inshallah we'll get into the laws and uh, what salat al uh, actually is uh, in further detail that's after the break stay tuned Welcome back. Hope you, inshallah, enjoyed uh, whatever you have been presented with the break. Uh, but before the break, we talked about the significance of Salat al-Layl and why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet and the Ahl Bayt, emphasized on uh, Salat al-Layl. But back to the discussion with my dear guest, 
Sayyid Hussain Al Qazwini. Welcome back, how you say Thank you very much. Thank you very much for uh, joining us over the past few episodes. My pleasure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sayyidna, the first part of the episode, we talked about what Salatul Layl is and uh, why the significance, what the significance, sorry, and why the emphasis Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed in this prayer. Uh, but scholars have stated or indicated that whatever is mustahab recommended upon the believers is somewhat obligatory or mandatory upon the prophets uh, or the prophets may make it obligatory upon themselves to do a certain you know recommended act upon the believers and this this is known for the prophets because they've reached that cognizant understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so if you want to apply this to the Holy Prophet of Islam, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his purified progeny, was Salatul Layl obligatory on him, or did he make it incumbent upon himself? You know, Salatul Layl has been mentioned in the Quran directly or indirectly mm -hmm. in several verses. Mm -hmm. um, some of those verses are pertaining to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Really, and we see that Rasulullah is clearly ordered. Mm -hmm. to pray Salatul Layl. It's an order. Thus, Salatul Layl was mandatory upon Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have a verse uh, that says, وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَهَجَّدْ بِهِ نَافِلَةً لَكِ عَسَى رَبُّكَ أَنْ يَبْعَثَكَ مَقَامًا مَحْمُودًا uh, He's being ordered, وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَهَجَّدْ بِهِ تَهَجُّدْ is Salatul Layl. And in the Sunni school of thought, they call it Salat al-Tahajjud because they also have Salat al-Layl. Mm -hmm, yes. They call it Salat al-Tahajjud, we call it Salat al-Layl. It's the same thing. Women al fatahajjud. In fact, if, we're, if we want to look at the Quranic concept, their concept is closer to the Quranic concept because the Quran is saying fatahajjud bihi. Al-Tahajjud. Al-Tahajjud bil-Layl is to pray at night. Nafilatan. Asa rabbuka an yab'ataka maqaman mahmooda. Maqam al Mahmuda is a special place for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a result of praying Salat al Layl. Salat al Layl was made incumbent upon Rasulullah and as a reward he was given Al Maqam al Mahmud. Scholars, they have various opinions on what is Al Maqam al Mahmud. Some say that it's a special place in paradise. Mm -hmm. So it's a special place in paradise that, that is reserved only for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Al-Maqam al-Mahmud is a level in paradise that is reserved only for Rasulullah. Isn't that called Tuba or no? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Perhaps. But Asa rabbuka an yab'athaka maqam al-Mahmud. Others say Maqam al-Mahmud is not a physical place. Mm -hmm. It's a position. Yes. And that position is the position of shafa'ah, the position of intercession. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa as a result of praying salat al his reward is shafa'ah for his nation. Rasulullah has the ability to intercede upon his nation mm -hmm. for those that are sinful, those that have sins. Allah will forgive his nation for the sake of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa as a reward of praying salat al so was this obligatory upon him? It was obligatory upon us. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ya ayyuha al-muzzammil qum al-layl. Oh, the one that al-muzzammil, he who is... Uh, Covered? Who is who wears a cloak. A cloak. Ya ayyuha al-muzzammil. Or muzzammil, um, muzzammil is a person who wears a cloak and from both sides, and, uh, what do you mean from both sides? See, it's a long cloak, yes. something like this. The right portion, he throws it on his left side. Mm -hmm. In the left side, he throws it on the right side. Why? So he's covered. Mm -hmm. They didn't have shirts. They didn't have coats. So how do you stay warm? By wearing your cloak in that way. Mm -hmm. This is called tazammul or al-muzzammil. Al-Muzzamil is to wear a cloak and then bring the right side over the left side and the left side. You know where you're, when you're wearing a scarf over your mm -hmm, yes. neck, you put 
the right side over the left side of your neck or your shoulder and you bring the left side over yes. the right side of the shoulder that's called muzammil ya ayyuhal muzammil qum al-layla illa qalila allah is ordering him to pray the entire night except a couple of hours qum al-layl illa qalila nisfahu aw inqus minhu qalila get up half of the night don't sleep ya rasulullah sleep let others sleep but you, you stand speak to us a prophet has to be spiritually prepared wow. spiritually connected to allah nisfahu aw inqus minhu qalila so if you can't stand to pray half of the night reduce a little bit aw zid alayhi if you could do more do more aw zid alayhi wa rattil alquran tartila in your salah perform tartil of the quran recite the quran that's the beauty that's another beauty of salat al layl is that when you stand up in the middle of the night and you and you recite quran because salah is all about quran yes you recite al fatiha and then chapters from the quran mm-hmm. 